Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thank you for joining me. So now we've understood a little bit more of the drivers of foraging behavior, let's look at what deer actually eat the annual food habits, and this is from a study that we conducted in Oklahoma in cooperation with the Noble Foundation there in Oklahoma, and in particular Ken G, a, a fine uh, wildlife biologist that worked for the uh, Noble Foundation. And we studied food habits throughout the four seasons of the year. And on the left axis, the, the vertical axis, you see the percentage of the diet that is made up from 0% up to 100%. And in the springtime, we see two forage classes. The green, the, the brighter green, represents forbs. Now, forbs are non-woody, broad-leaved weeds. So you see a picture of a legume, maybe a desmodium. Forbs are broad-leaved, non-woody green plants. And you can see that uh, forbs in the springtime make up about 70% of the food habits of a white-tailed deer. And then the other 30% of their food habits is made up of browse. In this case, uh, the early uh, green up springtime, the, uh, all the woody plants are putting out leaves and these leaves are brand new they're young and they're highly digestible and palatable to the deer, and so they're eating them. But they're still not quite as good as the forbs, otherwise they'd have probably eaten more brows than they did the forbs. In the summertime, you see a drop in the percentage of the diet that is brows. It, it drops to about 20%, and 80% of the summertime diet is forbs. This is because Forbs are more actively growing and available to the deer, and so they are going to more readily be eaten. They're more palatable uh, than the woody browse. Now, as you transition into fall, you see a, a significant drop in the forb uh, consumption rate, and uh, let me help you understand that. A big part of this uh, browse component, the, the uh, army green, I guess we'll call it, the brownish green, uh, that has a lot to do with the deer uh, switching to mast. They're eating oak mast, which is acorns, and this property had pretty significant oak component within the upper canopy, the overstory. Uh, and it also had an active prescribed fire program that, that kept the vegetation in a very healthy condition. And you can see in the fall in this particular study area, they start eating some grasses. Now, typically deer don't, whitetails don't eat a lot of grasses. But in this case, if you think back what I said, they're going to be selecting the newest, the youngest growth plant parts available. And in the fall, there are some beginnings of actively growing cool season grasses that are relatively high quality uh, compared to some of the older forbs that have been around all since the spring. And uh, also there's some of the grass, the warm season grasses have these basil rosettes that uh, are actually uh, pretty good quality. They're not the traditional part of the grass that you would think of as a grass, but they have these basil rosettes that are actually uh, are selected by the deer. And, and then in the wintertime, you see them eating a lot more grass, but this is the, the cool season grasses. And they're eating brows and mast. They're, they're eating brows that uh, some woody vines like smilax that are still have leaves on them. A lot of the other brows, the trees have dropped their leaves at this time, but they're still finding woody brows, leaves that are green, and uh, they're finding some wintertime forbs, some cool season forbs. So this is a really good general example of what deer are going to eat. And it, so what I like to do is generalize that deer are going to prefer forbs. If there are forbs available, 
that's what the deer are going to eat. Now they need a good supply of woody browse because the browse is more stable than the forbs. And particularly in uh, drier parts of the, of the country, as you get to the west of the Mississippi River, uh, browse is gonna be there every year. Forbs are gonna be more dependent on annual rainfall and the timing of that rainfall throughout the spring and summer. So forbs are really what they prefer, but they need that browse as a backdrop for when the forbs are not present. And I also say they relish mast and they relish it because when mast is, is on the ground or available, that's what they're going to, to look for. They will use grass when it's the best thing available, but we don't want to manage necessarily for grass to target white-tailed deer. Uh, but if it's grass being produced as part of a prescribed burning program, it's fresh and, and, and good during the particularly a cool season grass in the wintertime, they could very easily use it. But don't manage for grass if you're managing habitat for white-tailed deer. Now, why here? This will tell you why those different forage preferences exist. This is crude protein of forage classes. And when I say a forage class, I mean a type of plant. So a forb is a forage class. Now in this particular figure, we plotted percent crude protein on the, the vertical axis and forage classes along the horizontal axis. Legumes are a forb, but they're kind of a special forb. And so we broke those out and separate from the remainder of the forbs. So the forb plot here does not have any legumes. They're all in the legume plot. Looking in July, which if you remember a trumpet creeper in July is gonna be well below what deer need, even in the Delta region. So what they're gonna need gets them as close to that 16% crude protein as possible. And these are, these are not food plot legumes. These are native growing legumes in the lower coastal plain, which is one of our lowest quality soil regions in Mississippi during one of the worst times of the year during July, the legumes are leading the way in terms of crude protein content. Forbs are second. They have a couple of percentages less of protein, but they're still above the woody vines like Smilax, Rubus, uh, Dewberry, and then the woody plants down here around eight. So they're actually about 6% protein different from the legumes. And then grasses way down here below uh, the woodies at about six. Now, I'm gonna tell you later that maintenance requirements, just for a deer to live, they need about 7% crude protein. So grasses in the summertime, these are warm season grasses, in July, a deer can literally starve to death on warm season grasses. So they're not providing the deer with what they need. The grasses that I talked about deer eating in Oklahoma were cool season grasses, not warm season grasses. So this graph shows you why they prefer forbs and then vines and woody plants and then, and then grasses. And then mast is, you know, why do you why do you like ice cream? I mean, I love ice cream. It's not necessarily good for me, but uh, I'm going to eat ice cream when it's available, and that's the same with deer and, and and acorns. Now, deer do need or benefit nutritionally from acorns because it's a high fat, high energy source, and that helps them put on fat for the winter to help them get through the winter time, and so it's a nutritional value to deer to eat acorns, a lot of them, more the better. It's not nutritionally valuable to humans to eat a lot of ice cream, but it's the same kind of relish. So legumes, forbs, vines, oh, there's our trumpet creeper, woody plants as an oak, and then grasses. Uh, so if you wanna know what deer are going to eat in your area, they're going to find the legumes and the forbs, the vines and the woody, woody plants. And then lastly, if they have to, they'll, they'll eat the grasses.